Hello, everyone, and thank you very much for joining our webinar of the SESTA Metadata Office. Today, we will talk about the status quo of our work, about future developments, and we'll put a particular focus on the SESTA metadata model. My name is Karen, and together with my colleagues, Ezra, Sharon, Tina, Janine, Darren, and Alexander, we will guide you through this webinar. Before we get started content-wise, I would like to provide some technical information. Due to practicability, all participants will be muted during the whole webinar. You do have the possibility at any time to pose questions to the presenters using the question chat box. Your questions will be collected, prepared and sorted during the webinar. We will discuss those questions at the end of the webinar. Also, due to feasibility reasons, it would be best if you could pose your questions as soon as they occur and not wait until the presentation is over. This webinar will be recorded and the recording as well as the slides will be published. So as the title predicts, this webinar is about the work of the metadata office with a particular focus on the SESTA metadata model. This webinar is divided into three sections. We will start with a short introduction about SESTA and the SESTA Metadata Office in general. Then we will present the Metadata Office services ELST and CVS. In the second part, we will provide more detailed information on the SESTA data model, the CMM. We will present which information is covered by CMM and information on the changes that were made to the SESTA metadata model between version 0 0.1 and the most recent version of the CMM, version 1.0. We will talk about how MDO facilitates the work with CMM in the future, for example, by producing DDI profiles. The third and last part is reserved for questions and answers. For those of you who are not familiar with SESTA, I will now give a short introduction. SESTA stands for Consortium of European Social Science Data Archives, and ERIC stands for European Research Infrastructure Consortium. It is an alliance of social science data archives of currently 20 member countries. SESTA creates and runs services for the social sciences. It brings together social science data archives across Europe. SESTA aims to promote the results of social science research and to support national and international research and cooperation. The main task of SESTA ERIC and its service providers is to provide their communities with well-documented, verifiable, and understandable data for research. For those services, metadata plays an important role. SESTA acknowledged the importance of metadata with several SESTA projects over the years. The latest of those is the SESTA Metadata Office project. The Metadata Office project started in 2019. MDO forms a conceptual and strategic group to maintain and manage SESTA's metadata-related developments and materials. Both UKDS, the UK Data Service, and the Gesis Leibniz Institute for the Social Sciences have the shared lead for this project. The other project partners are FSD, the Finnish Social Science Data Archive, and NSD, Norwegian Center for Research Data. Our colleagues from the project have a variety of different backgrounds and possess a broad knowledge, yet at the same time a very detailed knowledge of the topics we are covering with our work. Therefore, the Metadata Office offers expertise in many different areas. Those areas of expertise are, for example, metadata and metadata standards in general, DDI, controlled vocabularies, the services and ISO codes. 
Furthermore, we have language specialists, we have very capable technical persons in our midst, and we also have colleagues that have a combined knowledge of the technical part and the content part, which is, as you can imagine, very helpful. Now, what does the Metadata Office do exactly? The Metadata Office oversees strategic developments for all metadata-related issues within SESTA. MDO is the principal point of contact regarding metadata issues within SESTA. We stay up to date with metadata requirements of the SESTA service providers and SESTA projects. We give recommendations to SESTA service providers on metadata. And also, the Metadata Office monitors metadata developments in other relevant consortia, institutions, initiatives, and projects. We define strategic metadata requirements to help plan and implement tools and services according to the needs of researchers and service providers. The Metadata Office manages the content of the European Language Social Science Thesaurus, ELST, and related multilingual vocabulary services. MDO updates the metadata materials we are responsible for, as, for example, the SESA metadata model. Those materials are based on the Documentation Initiative Standard DDI. Now I would like to talk about the European Language Social Science Thesaurus, ELST, which is a controlled vocabulary. But compared to a regular controlled vocabulary, a thesaurus is much more extensive and has a more complex structure. The ELST is a broad-based, multilingual thesaurus for the social sciences. ELST keywords are used to describe in detail the actual subjects and concepts covered by data. The ELST is managed by a dedicated team within the metadata office in close cooperation with expert translators. ELST has an annual new version release, including all languages. The latest version of the multilingual ELST was released in September 2019. The latest release contains two significant changes. Firstly, a new language, Dutch, was added. And secondly, scope notes were added to the Slovenian version. ELST is now available in 14 different languages. I will now continue with the SESTA controlled vocabulary services, the CVS. This multilingual vocabulary service of SESTA is a controlled vocabulary tool. Data producers can use the CVS to ensure systematic metadata and description for their data assets. The CVS provides a user-friendly source of standardized controlled vocabularies. Currently, there are 24 controlled vocabularies available in the CVS, including the SESTA topic classification. The vocabularies can be browsed online and downloaded in different formats. Those formats are SCAS, PDF, and HTML. The CVS also contains an editor for vocabulary management. This editor can be used by authorized users to create, manage, and translate the vocabularies. The service provides URNs for both the controlled vocabulary and for each version of it, as well as an API. The majority of the source vocabularies included in the service have been created by the DDI Alliance. Translation of the DDI vocabularies have been provided by SESTA members and associated organizations from different countries. The languages that are currently can be found in the CVS are Danish, German, English, Finnish, French, Italian, 
Norwegian, Portuguese, Serbian, Slovenian, and Swedish. Vocabulary information includes detailed documentation of any changes in published vocabularies. The MDO has also released the CVS User Guide. It includes information for the general user and instructions for editors on how to add, translate, and maintain a controlled vocabulary in the tool. The CVS User Guide is available online to registered CVS users. The User Guide will be revised and updated periodically. Within the MDO project, the Finnish Social Science Data Archive, FSD, and the United Kingdom Data Services, UKDS, have worked on the CVS software launch and the respective user guide. UKDS and FSD are also acting as content administrators of the CVS, handling user management and training. One of the metadata materials the Metadata Office is responsible for is the SESTA metadata model, the CMM. The first version of the CMM has been produced within the SESTA metadata management project. The SESTA metadata management project was the preceding metadata project to the Metadata Office. The CMM was created because the different service providers of SESTA use different kinds of standards and have different ways to document their data. In CMM, we agreed on one way of documentation. Service providers who want to get their metadata into SESTA tools like the SESTA Data Catalog, CDC, or the SESTA Euro Question Bank, EQB, need to ensure to make their metadata compatible with the metadata schemas of those tools. The tools metadata schemas are consistent with the CMM. Therefore, it is worth having a look at CMM, which I'm going to describe in more detail in the following. However, the CMM contains more metadata elements than do the metadata schemas of the tools. Therefore, the CMM can also be used if the metadata schemas of the tools shall be enriched in the future, or it can be used as a reference for rich metadata by all social science data archives who wish to extend their schemas. The first version of the SESTA metadata model and the CMM user guide were published in May and June 2019 via Sonodo. The latest version of the CMM was published in November 2019. Both CMM and the CMM user guide can be downloaded and cited using the DOIs displayed on this slide. One of the tasks of the MDO is to develop the CMM further. The CMM is built from the viewpoint of quantitative social science data. It serves the purpose of helping SESTA service providers to make their data more discoverable and understandable to users. Now, I would like to show what kind of information CMM covers. Let's have a look at the columns. As you can see on this slide, CMM contains information on the numbers of the elements within CMM. The numbers indicate the hierarchical order of the elements, saying which element is a parent element and which child elements belong to this top element. The next column contains their names. The names are chosen as far as possible based on the DDI element names, but with some adjustments when a name was not user-friendly or clear enough. Please remark that the names in the Euro Question Bank and the SESTA Data Catalog schemas sometimes differ from the CMM names, even though they cover the same metadata information. This third column contains the definitions of the elements. The definitions are intended to help users understand the meaning and the purpose of an element. 
We try to make the description as clear as possible. However, we are always open for suggestions of improvements and pointers in case that a definition includes misleading or unclear information in your point of view. The next column contains the status of the elements, meaning the information if an element is mandatory, recommended, or optional. In some cases, an element might only be mandatory for DDI 3.2 users or for service providers who want to make their documentation available in the SESTA data catalog. These specifications can be found in parentheses. One example of that would be the element study title. If your archive would like to have their metadata represented in the SESTA data catalog, the element study title is mandatory. For the Euro Question Bank, however, study title is not mandatory. But if you intend to integrate your metadata into both tools, you have to cover all elements that are mandatory in CMM. The following col column contains information on the standardized or controlled content of an element. In this column, you can see if there's a specific ISO code, CV, the service or classification to be used for a metadata element. The next column contains information on the occurrences of the elements. So, for example, if this column says the occurrence is one, it means the use of the element is mandatory and it's not repeatable. If the element in question is a child element, it means its use is compulsory if this, its upper element is used. If the occurrences are, for example, zero to n, this means that the element can be used, but does not have to be and it can be repeated as many times as needed. And the last column of the CMM metadata schema contains DDI 3.2 example X passes. And I want to stress the word example here. The CMM doesn't say which X passes are to be used to capture an element since in DDI lifecycle, there are different possible ways to represent an element. The X paths you can find in the CMM represent only one of those different possibilities and were merely intended to improve the understanding of various elements. The new version of CMM also contains a mapping to the elements of the current version of the SESTA data catalog metadata schema. The CMM is based on DDI 3.2 lifecycle. The DDI lifecycle standard is used for several reasons. DDI offers detailed documentation in such a way that others can reuse and comprehend data. Additionally, the metadata is machine actionable when using DDI. This facilitates its distribution to other digital data catalogs. And enhances the findability and visibility of the data. DDI lifecycle is the most appropriate standard for our purposes. It enables the extensive and thorough description of social science research data and their origin. In general, DDI is the most elaborate and most commonly used metadata standard for the social science survey data. The information that is covered in the SESTA metadata model is information on study, persons, institution, data set, survey, instrument, question and responses, concepts, further documents, publications, group of studies, and the document description. The CMM metadata schema structure is based on the principle for reusability of metadata elements. To do this, we use the DDI lifecycle possibilities for referencing and reusing information. 
wherever possible, we used elements within resource package. So let's talk about the DDI control vocabularies that are used in the CMM. Since different SESTA services require information in different languages, the CMM supports multilingual listen. The SESTA metadata model contains translated controlled vocabularies. Among those are DDI vocabularies to describe research data. The controlled vocabularies are currently available in English, which is mostly the source language, and in Danish, Finnish, French, Italian, Norwegian, Portuguese, Serbian, Slovenian, and Swedish. The metadata office works closely with the experts on controlled vocabularies of the DDI Alliance. Okay, now um, we will go to the SESTA metadata model itself. And you can see the current version of the CMM. And the first sheet contains overview information. So here you can see the names of the authors, publication date, the version number, the DOI and the license. And you can also see overview information on the content um, that is within the CMM, covered in the CMM, which I just presented. And here are information on the columns, so you can see which columns are in the CMM, and also um, the significant signification of the column, so what each column actually means. The second sheet contains the actual metadata schema. Um, so here you can see the information I described earlier, the columns. And if you scroll down, you can see all the elements. And there are a lot of elements in the CMM because we were aiming for rich metadata. So I can scroll down and it just keeps going and going and going. And um, yeah, it's quite extensive. And as I mentioned before, the new um, CMM version also contains the information, the mapping information to the CDC. So if you sc um, scroll right to the columns I to M, you can see the information from the CDC or some information from the CDC metadata schema. And if you scroll down, you can see them mapped to the actual CMM elements. Now the third sheet contains information on all the different changes that have been made between the current version and the version before this one. You can see if there's been a minor change or a major change. And you can see which element the change is referred to. And you can also see which actual changes have been made to those elements and in which columns the changes occurred. Okay, let's go back to the presentation. And um, I would like to clarify that the CMM is a model, which means that it defines a global set of objects and metadata that are supported by SESTA. It is useful in that it reduces the complexity of the whole DDI specification, and it allows us to scope what objects for DDI are important for SESTA. Now I would like to give some more information on the alterations that have been made in CMM. From the first published version, version 0 0.1, to the current version of the CMM, which was actually the second published version, um, version 1.0, there have been 481 changes in total. 227 of those were major changes and the remaining 254 were minor changes. And as you have just seen on the Excel version of the CMM, the detailed change history is to be found on the third Excel sheet in the CMM. The changes that occurred between the two CMM versions are in more detail. 228 typo corrections, 
71 changes in element numbers. There were 67 changes in the status of an element, meaning if an element is mandatory or recommended or optional. We had 28 changes in the information on the control vocabularies. Also, 28 elements were added. The names of 26 elements were altered. 17 element definitions have been rephrased. 12 occurrences and elements were changed. Two elements were removed completely from the CMM and two X paths were corrected. To make it possible for the metadata office to stay up to date with metadata requirements of the SESTA service providers and SESTA projects, the SESTA main office has established an issue tracking system via a Bitbucket repository for SESTA service providers. Via this repository, MDO communicates and manages metadata quality issues in close cooperation with the SESTA service providers. Most of the members of SESTA have already signed up for Bitbucket. The Bitbucket repository for MDO allows the members to create issues concerning the CMM or other met metadata topics. This makes it easier to keep track of the issues and to see if others have already addressed them and if they have been solved. So one of the questions the MDO has put a focus on this year is how we can further simplify the metadata life within SESTA. A meaningful way to do this is by making the CMM and the metadata schemas of EQB and CDC easier to understand for an easier understanding of the CDC and EQB metadata schemas, the SESTA metadata office is currently working on DDI profiles for those metadata schemas. The MDO will produce DDI 2.5, DDI 1.2.2, which is Nestor, and DDI 3.2 profiles for the SESTA data catalog as well as DDI 2.5 and DDI 3.2 profiles for the SESTA Euro Question Bank. The MDO is also working on a UML model based on the CMM. Those are improvements of the technical representations of the SESTA metadata materials. The profiles and the UML model are intended to promote the understanding and the implementation of SESTA's metadata schemas for the SESTA service providers. These technical specifications are also intended to help the common understanding of metadata elements. To facilitate workflows that, are support, that support the management of complex metadata. And finally, to support the implementation and use of the SESTA metadata model. To further assist the production of quality metadata by the SESTA service providers, the MDO is currently working on a SESTA metadata validator, short CMV. The SESTA metadata validator will be an open source tool for SESTA's metadata providers and SESTA tools. The CMV's functions are aimed to cater to the needs of SESTA. With the CMV, it will be possible to validate metadata documents and check if they correspond to the metadata specifications of SESTA tools, like the SESTA data catalog and the SESTA Euro Question Bank. The metadata providers can feed their metadata documents in the CMV and the CMV checks if those documents are valid. The CMV checks against an external definition by an XML file called profile if those documents are valid. For the near future of the CMM and MDO in general, in 2020, we will stay up to date with metadata requirements of SESTA service providers and SESTA projects. We will maintain 
all metadata issues in close cooperation with them. MDO will continue its promotion inside and outside of SESTA. We will continuously keep track of the metadata world and the work and developments on other relevant initiatives and standards and projects. We will furthermore continue our work on ELST and the multilingual vocabulary services. We update the CMM and the CMM user guide, and we will produce the DDI profiles mentioned before, as well as the SESTA metadata, as as the metadata validator. And now we are finished with the presentation and have time left for questions and answers. Therefore, I yield the floor to my colleague Ezra. Thank you, Karen. I'm going to start to share my screen now. So thank you all for all the questions you have already posted in the question box. So um, I will read out the questions you have posted into the chat box or in the question box. Uh, and also there were some questions during the registration process. So uh, let's start with the questions. Um, we have received before the webinar. The first question uh, came from the Danish National Archives and it says, what, what metadata is mandatory? Any tools for publishing, searching research data with Chesta metadata for social science only? Um, maybe I can start to uh, answer this question. So um, I think Karen Oz already mentioned how to read the, the CMM spreadsheet. So I think it would take too long now to, uh, to list all the mandatory elements of CMM, uh, but uh, the list of the mandatory elements um, can be found in the published version of CMM. And uh, the elements are, which are mandatory are marked with an M. And regarding tools of CHESTA, um, as Karen mentioned, there's the CHESTA Euro Question Bank, uh, which will be launched this year, and the CHESTA Data Catalog, for both for the social sciences. And CHESTA the Data Catalog is already up and running. Yes, yes, that's true. Thank you, Taina. Um, the next one is from APIS, uh, and the question is, how can we adapt the CMM to Nesta, for example, to have PID there? In which field can we put it as it should appear in CDC? Um, I don't know who can answer this question. Maybe Karen? Yeah, I can do that. Sure. Thank you, Asra. Um, so um, what we know um, is that both the SESTA data access policy and the SESTA PID policy state that PIDs will be mandatory um, for SESTA serv service providers by 2020 at the end of 2020. So this means that PIDs will be mandatory elements for, uh, or will be a mandatory element for SESTA service providers and also for SESTA tools like EQB and CDC by the end of this year. Um, so other service providers who use Nestor as well need to adjust their metadata schema and should communicate to Nestor that this field is needed. So if you cannot provide an element that is part of the CMM, um, but not a Nestor available, like PID or other elements. This is something that has to be negotiated um, with SES, uh, Nestor, and the service providers have to think about other options, possibly, for example, uh, move to other DDI formats where the mandatory elements are covered in case this is not possible for Nestor. But, um, yeah. yeah my, my impression is that Nestor is no longer maintained. So it will not be changed. So, so it, it's problematic for PID. So maybe other options may become necessary. Yes. Yeah, and I think okay. <laughs> I think um, maybe if, if um, this is a really big problem, um, I think that um, possibly um, a good way would be to to address this um, to um, the uh, main office and ask. Um, for extensions or something. But I think, um, yeah, I think um, updating to a new DDI version that makes it possible is always a good idea. The, the, okay. the, the follow, 
I mean, the the DDI two already allows you to have a PID. It, 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 you can put it in one element, and the next version of DDI two, which is now being prepared, which is DDI two point two point six. Uh, we are hoping to have a separate element for for a PID there uh, to to differentiate it from other identifiers. But but anyway, there is already an element identifier element where you can put it. Okay. Any additions to this question? Okay. Thank you both for answering the question. Um, the next question is from Naomi Bettencourt. Uh, it's regarding the ELST and the question is, is ELST available as LOD, the linked open data? Um, who can answer this question? I can answer it. It's Maybe. Sharon here from the Sharon? UKD. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, at the moment, as you may know, the current ELSP software is nearing the end of its life. Um, it doesn't have an API, API and its linked open data um, opportunities are quite limited at the moment. But we're moving to a new ontology management platform during the autumn, um, which is based on which is Zotbench. And once Elst is available in Doc, is based in Dropbench. It will be available as linked open data, um, and there will be an API as well. It will be available in RDF and SCOS format, so we should have this capability later in the year. Um, Darren, did you want to say anything more about RDF at the moment? Uh, yes, I mean, there is a representation of ELST currently available, uh, and as we move the system onto something called Scosmos later in the year, yes, it will be uh, available as well. We'll enhance some of the RDF as well with more versioning and, and provenance information as well. Yeah, and, and this is Tyner again. So if, and the, the license will be a CC license by the end of the year. Okay. Any additions? Then I will go to the next question. The next question is: um, I believe else used to have restricted access, but it it is now publicly accessible. Is that correct? Um, well, in fact, to follow on from from Tyner's from what Tyner's just said, mm -hmm. um, Elst is available publicly to everyone who wants to browse it. It's restricted access in that if you want to use it in your own systems or do a translation, um, you have to enter a license agreement. It's currently with the University of Essex, but when Elst moves into the new software and is published on the CESDA website, um, it will move to a CC license. So it's always been publicly accessible for general browsing and, <clears throat> and um, people who want to look at it. But if you want to undertake use of it within your own systems or do a translation, you will have to agree to a CC license in future as well. But there's no charge for any of this. So uh, yeah, it's free of charge. Okay, thank you, Sharon. The next question is from Marion Wittenberg and Arnulf Rusnes um, regarding the APIs. Uh, the question is uh, from Marion, are there APIs available? And Arnulf says, thank you for the webinar. One question regarding the Chester vocabulary service. I didn't quite get whether or not its content is available via API now or when and if it is planned. Uh, I, think it is, yeah, I think there is an API now. Okay. Any additions to this answer? Well, I think for uh, the CV service, this is Darren, uh, by the way, for the CV service, there is an API in place at the moment. For else, there will be both a RESTful endpoint and, and an RDF XML uh, endpoint as well. So you can query link data on there. 
In terms of the says the metadata, metadata model, there isn't currently uh, an API, uh, but that's something that we, we can look at once that's converted to uh, an XSD specification and a UML model. Okay, thank you. I hope this answers the question from Marion and Arnulf. Um, and then I go to the next question. Uh, Joachim Wackerow asks, could I hear more on the CMM XSD um, UML model? So oh, I hi. guess, yeah, yeah go this, ahead, Darren. Yeah, this is, yeah, this is Darren here. Obviously, we've started uh, collecting the information for the met metadata model over the last couple of years in a spreadsheet. Now, clearly, that's fine as, as a starting point, but we do need to formalize the specification. Uh, now, in order to standardize the mappings to 3.2 or 2.5 or maybe even 3.3 later on, we need to, the simplest way to do this is to start with an XSD specification. Now, that's about two thirds complete at the moment, and that should be ready by the end of June uh, to publish onto Zenodo uh, a full XSD schema. There are about 500 elements in there. What we'd like to do uh, then is because the XSD isn't actually going to be used in, in any practical sense to generate XML documents, we're then going to generate a UML model which will be able to uh, convert into XMI and then automatically generate documentation as needed. So uh, the thing about the UML model is that it's simply a mechanism to define all the possible elements uh, or more correctly object attributes that we'd like to use in the model and it can map to different DDI schema that's its principal purpose it's not actually a schema that's implemented it's actually a model where we can make uh, associations between for instance 2.5 or 3.2 elements and, and demonstrate equivalences so yes, that, that the UML model should be ready by the end of September and the XSD specification will be ready earlier than that by the end of, by the end of June, uh, early July, when we'll publish that on two Zenodos. All right, thank you, Darren. Okay, then I go, yeah, that's it from the question that came up during the webinar. Now I'm going to open the questions that came up during the question and answer session. Um, yeah, there was an additional question from Joachim who said, are the profiles published somewhere? Um, they are not yet. Quite happy to send you a, a copy of, of the one we've been working on over the last few weeks. Um, if I may add to this, um, this is Karen, hi. <laughs> Um, so um, we intend to have um, the DDI profiles and the UML model. Um, it's all going to be um, publicly available as soon as they are done, of course, and approved by um, the main office. Thank you both. Then there is a question from Benjamin Poys. Um, I'm not entirely sure I understand the rationale of the CMM. I guess it is twofold. Provide some Chester specific guidelines regarding data set slash study metadata in general, drawing on the opportunity of having several social science experts working together thanks to Chester. And second, prepare a technical standard that can help with later developments of tools such as um, the Chester data catalog, is that correct? Um, I don't know who wants to answer this. Uh, I'm happy to answer that, it's, it's Darren here. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. the, the purpose of the model is really as uh, a definition of supported elements principally from multiple DDI specifications. On a day-to-day -day basis we use DDI to validate documents and we use DDI to uh, ingest metadata from different service providers. The model is just an abstraction of all the different element DDI elements that we support. Uh, as everyone knows, DDI3 is a very, very large specification. So it's helpful to define a supported subset of elements from DDI. 
but rather than just making it a DDI 3.2 specification, we've decided to abstract the model. So we say there's about you know 400 or so elements across all versions of DDI that the CESDA metadata office will support. And so we take those elements and we uh, transcribe them as uh, UML uh, classes and attributes uh, in order that we can map them to different elements in different DDI specifications. So as I said before, the, the CESDA metadata model is really a document, a documentation artifact rather than a specific uh, artifact to help people implement metadata. The practical guidance and implementation of metadata is done in the DDI profile. So I don't know if that helps. Yes, thank you, Darren. I, th uh, I would like to ask, uh, Karen, do you want to share your screen regarding... You, uh, yeah, Esra, you yeah. missed one question, question seven. Yes, maybe we can open up the Google Doc. Uh, I think uh, Irena has pasted all the questions in there. Yeah, I think so there was a question about using the CMM for qualitative data. Um, yes, I was going to ask this. Yeah, go ahead. Yes. Yeah, any so this is Tina again from Finnish Social Science Data Archive. Uh, that the Finnish Social Science Data Archive has been using the the CMM model uh, or the DDI for years for for documenting qualitative data. So I, I think already in in CESTA in just the data catalog, it already contains some of the qualitative data sets. Do you want to do, comment on this, Sharon, from the UKDS point of view? Yes, many of the elements in the CMM to describe the data um, are common between qualitative and quantitative data sets. So we use the elements at the UKDS as well. Um, obviously, any which which are quantitative data specific we may not be able to use but that none of the mandatory or recommended elements are include uh, include those okay and then okay, i would you. also like to say, say something that i've often been asked about the sesta vocabulary service because sesta vocabulary service currently uh, is used to maintain the DDI vocabularies, and DDI is an international standard. So the languages, I mean, the translations are not con confined to CESTA or restricted to CESTA organizations. So if there are anyone who is interested in having their own language uh, version of the DDI vocabularies, just get in contact with myself or Sharon, and who is willing to maintain that language um that is possible so the the use of the tool is not restricted to sesta in, in in no way all right thank you then i'm going to ask the next question uh there seem to be mandatory cmm elements and others is there a distinction in the other groups like strongly recommended and others um, I can answer to this. Mm -hmm. This is Karen. Um, so um, if I get the question right, um, the question is if we have recommended, strongly recommended, not so much recommended and optional, um, like distinctions between uh, different optional types of optional. So um, no, we do not have that. Um, we have mandatory, recommended and um, optional and recommended and optional are all the distinctions we have for those. But um, we can basically consider um, every recommended element we think is a very good element to have in your metadata. And um, recommended almost um, actually means strongly recommended, but uh, we didn't make it mandatory because um, it's not feasible for everyone and um, not um, working in any case of element or metadata um, documents. So I hope this answers the questions. Uh, the question. And and talking from the wearing the hat of the CDs data catalog user group, I would say that any element that is actually 
within the data catalog would, from my perspective, be strongly recommended. Yes, absolutely. I absolutely agree, Taina. All right. Thank you both. The next question is, I'm struggling to understand in CMM the difference between study ID and study number, maybe because it's DDI lifecycle specific uh, and we use DDI 2.5 Dataverse in Belgium. So they try to understand the difference between study ID and study number. Um, do you want to answer, Karen? Or yes. should I? Yes, I'd be happy to. And you can add if you want to. Is that okay? Yes. Go ahead. So, um, yeah, so um, actually the question has been answered within the question. So this is a very DDI spe specific thing. We have the um, study ID, um, which is a DDI specific ID um, we're referring to the, um, if I may share my screen actually in this case, I, I don't have the possibility to do that right now, but could somebody share my screen? <laughs> okay, yeah, perfect, thank you. So, um, as you can see here, we have the study ID, and this is um, DDI 3.2 or DDI lifecycle specific um, information. If you have a look at the XPath um, example, um, you are um, you need to um, provide um, the information on the agency, on the ID, and on the version. Um, um, the difference to the study number, the study number is a unique archival number. And um, this is basically, like for example, um, in GESIS, we have the um, set R numbers, which are our internal PIDs for, um, for our studies. So um, I hope this makes it more clear, but I'm happy for anyone who would like to add something to that. So it's more like the study number is often an in-house uh, yes. an, an in-house and uh, the study ID is more of a persistent identifier like a DOI or URN or something like that. Um, actually, um, the study or do ID... we have a different element for the persistent identifier? Yes, yes, we also have a study PID. I can, I can see if I can find it um, quickly. So we have a study PID. So that ah, is like okay. a global PID. That's like, that is like a um, um, uh, DOI or you um, or uh, let's uh, ARC or something like that and the study number is the internal archival number and the study ID in this case so we have a lot of IDs we also have um, no this is not it um, this is the DDI specific num uh, ID so yeah person ID is the same thing here so this is the DDI specific um, ID DDI specific information for DDI lifecycle yeah, because I think that the uh, for CESTA the PDIs become mandatory next uh, by, by the end of this year, and they can be of there 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 are four types I think for for CESTA that they can be they can be a URN, a DOI, and handler, and I can't remember the fourth one, but but they're, they're I, I specified. Think it might be arc. Yeah, arc. Yeah, so these are the four different types. That, that the SESTA will accept as the PDI. Yeah. So, okay, you can, um, I think you can go back to your screen. Thank you for letting me share. All right. Um, there are uh, two comments. Um, first of all, hi all. What we did in order to have a PID using DDI2 was to use Dataverse instead of Nesta. And then there was also a link uh, to the CVs API included. Um, can, can I have just a comment on this, this Dataverse use? Uh, mm -hmm. and I guess there are archives that are considering switching from Nesta to Dataverse. Could the person who posted this this comment send the contact emails to me uh, so that I know? I mean, there the, the, there are users of Dataverse already that those archives can maybe be in contact with when they are doing this switch to Dataverse or considering the switch to Dataverse. 
Yeah, maybe they can send uh, an email to yeah. the official metadata office and then yes. we can forward this email to you. Yeah, that would be good. Okay, thank you, Taina. The next question is, is Dataverse compatible with CMM mandatory fields? That is, if we use Dataverse, will metadata be compatible with CMM? So, good, good question. To answer this, yeah, this is a very difficult question. Yeah, and it should also be compatible with the SESTA data catalog. If it's yeah, not, I, yeah. No, go ahead, Tina, finish your sentence. Yes, I mean, if, if not, not, hmm, well, for you, Karin. <laughs> Yeah, um, so we did um, a check with um, CMM and Dataverse um, last year, I think, um, comparing the CMM elements we had back then um, to the Dataverse elements um, to make sure that um, Dataverse doesn't have elements that we don't have. So, so um, like from, I don't know if there have been um, additional elements to Dataverse. We'll have to do this again this year. So this is also um, something that we plan to do um, sometime in the future. Uh, make sure that um, CMM is compatible compatible with um, Dataverse. Um, so as far as I know, or at least um, the last time we checked, everything was fine. So um, CMM had the elements with Dataverse, and uh, but I think I'm not exactly sure. Um, Dataverse didn't have mandatory or that man, many mandatory elements, but um, you should be able to cover um, the CMM mandatory fields with um, Dataverse because there are not that many CMM mandatory fields. And it, again, again, it depends if you want to have um, um, all the CMM mandatory elements or if you um, intend to have only the CDC mandatory elements all the EQB mandatory elements because yeah, they but the do CDC mandatory elements are really a small subset. Uh, I mean, it, yes. it, it's also problematic if it doesn't have the recommended elements and not having the language of metadata is of course because uh, CDC is harvesting from men, in many different languages. And in sometimes uh, you get files that have two languages in the same file. So if you if you have files that don't have the language of the metadata, it's actually quite problematic. So it would be really nice to have, if if it's possible in 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 the future to to have to have the language of the metadata on on, on in in the database and what's the time timeline for that? Yeah, so um, I see that Marion is posting um, from from the shock and from dance, and she's working in the shock project. They also had the shock webinar um, a couple of weeks ago, and she um, she's posting some answers to this. So um, Marion says within the shock project, there are tools avail available to convert between Nestor and Dataverse. So this is very good news. So um, mm -hmm. in case you um, you need more information on that, in case you're using still Nestor and you want to convert to Dataverse, um, please get in contact with Marion from Dance. And um, yes, she says, yes, Dataverse is compatible with CMM and the SESTA data catalog. And we are working within the SHOC. Um, so also great news. And within the SHOC, we are working on the languages. Um, yeah, and Marion, um, so yeah, Marion, Wittenberg, she posted her um, her email um, in the in the document. So um, please send it to her. I guess you can see it on the screen right now. Marion, thank you very much. Um, also, um, the the recording of the shock webinar is also online in the documents um, for it. So um, you can also um, have a look at the shock webinar if you're interested in more information on that. All right, thank you. Uh, there is one more comment. Uh, thanks, I'm from Quali Service, Qualitative Data Archive in Germany, and we also use DDI 3.2 for our records. So uh, mapping with CMM is encouraged. We use these IDs. That's good to hear. Um, I think there aren't any more questions. 
so I guess we are pretty much really on time. So um, I will wait one more minute if there are any comments or questions from your side. Okay. I think there isn't. Is there something one of the speakers wants to add to the questions um, or any general information? Um, I would like to to say something. It's it's not um, general information, but I would just like to thank all the um, presenters um, and um, also especially Irina from ADP who who did um, who managed the webinar um, on all the technical um, issues. So thank you very much for that. All right. So I think we can stop here now. So um, if you have any questions uh, that were not answered now or, or that will come uh, into your minds after the webinar, uh, please do not hesitate to contact us. Um, so we will be happy to answer them afterwards. So thank you all for your questions and also for your interest and participation in this webinar. Uh, I can speak for us both maybe. Uh, that was a pleasure for us. And, uh, and I would like to also thank all the speakers and everyone who was involved in preparing the presentation um, and who were willing to answer the questions. Uh, but before I say goodbye, um, I would appreciate um, if you could take a couple of minutes to answer the evaluation questions that you will see right after the webinar. So you will be asked a couple of questions. Um, they will provide us guidance. Uh, to our work in MDO and CMM and will ensure that we know about your wishes for future metadata work within SESTA. So what is left now is to say goodbye and I wish you all a nice day or evening wherever you come from and stay healthy. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. This video is produced by the Consortium of European Social Science Data Archives. For more information on SESTA, please visit www.sesta.eu.